In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a statement of financial position for our not-for-profit organization. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to be heading on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. We're looking at the statement of financial position. That, in essence, is the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a little bit more straightforward than the equivalent of the income statement. We'll have, of course, our major functions, our major features, that being the assets, the liabilities, and then what is the different name being net assets versus the equity. So that's kind of like the major difference that we have down here with regards to uh, the naming feature. But other than that, uh, we, we have a similar kind of outbreak. Also note that in the net assets, we have this breakout between uh, with donor restrictions and without donor restrictions rather than just having one account uh, and that's not too different than other types of entities if it's a partnership we'd have two capital accounts if, if it was a corporation we'd have to break out between uh, retained earnings and then common stock and whatnot so those are, that's going to be the major differences we'll have to deal with with our reporting let's head on over to zero we're going to hit the accounting drop down and let's be opening up the balance sheet. We'll just open up the standard balance sheet here. So we've been and usually when we're just working on the data input into the system, the standard balance sheet works fine. We don't really need any special worksheet because the major difference has to do with like a terminology thing. So we don't have a, a, a worksheet that we need as we do with the statement of activities. Hitting the drop down on the date, I'm going to be putting this out to the 31st. So we'll say January 31st and there's what we have so here's our report and let's uh, right click on this let's duplicate it right click on it and duplicate just so we have the standard balance sheet then go back to the left and let's just make our adjustments on this balance sheet now we've got our, our balance sheet as of the end of the month and i know i've been i've adjusted the, the dates it could be the end of the year or the end of the month we don't have any data after the end of january so the reports will be the same uh, at the end of the month or the end of the year then we have our breakout. We have the assets uh, within the asset category. We've got the cash. Notice cash is kind of broken out into a, a separate category here because that's just you know the subcategory formatting that uh, the system is using. Now note we we may want to to minimize that or not have that breakout. And we again we have some great flexibility with zero that could help us to do that. Then we have the uh, accounts receivable and the two subcategories. Uh, resulting which are the allowance for uh, uncollectible pledges and the discounts those are going to be the contra asset accounts then we have the fixed assets notice down here that the furniture and fixtures below the allowance now again we have the formatting here that we could do that just right in the system and, and adjust that in our reporting which is pretty neat and then we have the current liabilities and we have the accounts payable and and the payroll and then down in the equity we have this kind of issue with the the current earnings which are tying out to the current income statement but I'd really like that current earnings to be grouped with uh, the unrestricted items that's where it should go this isn't actually an account up here it's just telling us what the current earnings it should roll into the net assets unrestricted and then of course we have the issue with the name being equity which we would like to be called net assets equity up here we would like to be called net assets and equity down here so let's see what we can do with some of some of these items. Let's go to the edit layout. So we're going to go to the edit layout uh, down below. So editing editing the layout. And then I'm not going to uh, I'm going to delete the changes for now. And we're going to have just the information here. So now we have the current assets. Now here we have the cash and cash equivalents. Now we may not want this subcategory. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize that. And so now we just have the cash. And if I go back on over and I say, all right, what's that going to look like? If go back on over to the balance sheet. Now we don't have that, that subcategory, which is unnecessary since we only have the, the one cash account. So now cash is right in there. That looks, that looks nicer. I don't need a subcategory. So I'm going to go into edit again. Let's see what else we can do here. Now this accounts receivable, the allowance and the discount are all pretty much related. So what I, what I could do is select those three. We could select those three, make a group of them. We can make a group of them and call them accounts, uh, accounts receivable, receivable, and then say, all right. And then I'm going to keep that one open. And what that'll do is if I say, okay, 
that'll give us a little subcategory. So now we have the accounts receivable and it'll show then here's the actual receivables, here's the allowance, here's the discounts, and then here's basically the net receivables in a similar fashion as we see down here with uh, the fixed assets. Now let's see if we can put the furniture and fixture above the allowance here. So we're going to go back to the edit to layout again. And let's take a look at the fixed assets and see what we can do with that. So I'm going to say we've got uh, the allowances on top. I'd like the furniture and fixture to be on. So I'm just going to grab it and drag it up to the top. And there we have that. I'm going to say done. Let's see if that, uh, that pulls over properly on our report. So then we're going to say scroll on down and that looks nicer that looks nice so now we got this and the allowance so this is what we bought it for this is the decrease for the depreciation accumulated or allowance and that gives us the, the net and then on the liabilities that looks good the payables look good uh total liabilities and then in the equity i'd like to group these together this is a little bit more tricky because this isn't actually an account up here so let's see if we can see what it lets us do with that we're going to go into the uh edit layout and then let's go down to the bottom and i'd like this current earnings to be grouped in with the unrestricted so i'm holding down control and then clicking the unrestricted and i'd say i'd like to group that into a group that it's just going to simply be called the uh the un or let's say net assets net assets unrestricted like so and then we'll say done uh actually i shouldn't have said i need to close up the little triangle but let's see what it looks like now so if we then say all right what is that going to look like so there we have just put it into a subcategory now i'm going to minimize that subcategory so i'm going to go into the edit layout again and then scroll down to the bottom and i'd like to hit the little triangle and so there we have that now let's say done i think that's what we want that's what we want it to be so then if we scroll down now we have the net assets so that that looks nice that's that looks nice so that's pretty much all we could do in here which is a lot more than most software and so but we still have the naming convention on equity here equity here equity here and equity there probably won't bother anybody but it should be the net assets but again just look at the flexibility you have on that now i would make an external report something like this and maybe keep some more of that detail you know not do things like like uh combine the net assets out for the internal reporting because it's kind of nice to see that when you're doing the internal reporting but it's but when you give it to someone else you want it grouped in something like this format all right let's go ahead and then change the name up top so the name we're just going to call it the statement of financial position which is basically the balance sheet so we'll click on the statement of financial position name here or down here <laughs> and we'll rename it there and then I'm going to then I'm going to customize it. Let's go to the customize report. We want to save as a custom report. Put that name there. Not going to overwrite the original balance sheet, keeping that unchecked. Saving then. So there we have it. Now let's go to the second tab and uh, just check out that it's been showing up where we want it. So accounting drop down Let's go into the reports and then we're going to go into the custom reports. So within the custom reports, we have now our statement of, of financial position. Now, I don't have the, the worksheet for the balance sheet here. I don't need a worksheet, but you might want to make one that has some of these adjustments, but not all of them. So you might want to, you know, not want to combine some of them, but like the depreciation we adjusted to be on top. That could be an adjustment we would want to look, see it that way all the time. So you might then, I would always keep the, the standard balance sheet and not overwrite it, but you might want to make a balance sheet worksheet, which has some more subtotals and then an external report that then will be pre-formatted as best it can for you for, the, for when you want to distribute it. So then I'm going to go back to the first tab. That looks good. Let's go ahead and do our printing. So we can, we're going to save it as a PDF file. We're going to save it as an Excel file. We're then going to make a PDF file with all the reports on it that we have done thus far. So let's go to the export. We're going to export uh, as a PDF. It'll show up down here in the in the bottom part because it's Chrome and that's where Chrome does stuff. And then we're going to be opening up uh, this report. I'm just going to drag it on over. 
I'll just put that into the financial statements here. I'm going to drag that on over. Just the good old dragging and then dropping. Drag it and then drop it. All right. And then I'm going to go back to the first tab. I'm going to open up our financial statements. That's where I'm going to ultimately put the Excel report. So let's just open that up now since I'm already here. So there it is. So that's that. And now let's open up. Let's do this one in Excel. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to maximize this. I'm going to close. I'm going to then export again to Excel, which opens it up down here in Excel. I'm not going to drag and drop it, but open it because I want to take the information from it. I want to take that information and put it into our other uh, Excel worksheet, which already has our reports in it. So to do that, I'm going to enable the editing up top. And then I'm going to copy the entire worksheet by clicking the triangle. And then I'm going to right click on the selected area and copy it. And then I'll uh, just close this or minimize this report. Go back to our other report, which was this one. And then I'm going to add another sheet to it. So I'm going to hit the little plus bottom at the button at the bottom. And then I'm going to go back up top to A1, right click on A1, and then paste this entire thing. So paste it there. Then I'm going to double click on the tab below, double clicking on sheet one. And this is going to be statement of financial position, something like that. So, so there we have it. Now let's check the layout. I'm going to go to the second layout tab, page layout. Looks like it uh, looks like it fits on a page back to the first tab. So it looks like it fits on a page that looks that looks good. Then we can change some of the names, right? So now here is where I could say this shouldn't be liabilities and equity, but it should be liabilities and net assets. And this down here shouldn't be equity, but should be net assets. And this down here shouldn't be equity, but it should be. Uh, it's on this little cell over here. I'm going to change it up here. Equity, it should be net assets. That's what it should be. So there we have that. So we can make that minor little tweak uh, in Excel. So any, any kind of name changes that uh, are part of the programming system that we can't change in the system, we can, we can make obviously any changes we want once we export it to Excel here. So now we can print all these reports at, uh, at one time. Uh, and collate them already or have them collated already as they are printed which is great from excel and we can send it to a pdf file to have all reports at once so i'm going to print it i'm going to print the entire workbook and that has our four pages here's our four pages and then we can print it to the cute pdf printer which will put it all on the pdf file so we're going to say print it's going to ask us where do we want to put it so I'm going to say, uh, here we go. It's going to be a financial statement. So I'm going to overwrite that other one. I'm going to say save. And yes, it'll overwrite the other one. I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to save it. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize that. There we have it. Now, now we could give someone the reports. Now we have four of them. It's getting a little bit longer. We can have four attachments to an email, for example. Or we can right click on this folder and and uh, send it as a zipped file which it's having some problems so if we right clicked on it then we could send it as a zipped file looking like that and attach just the zipped file we can print already collated from excel as we saw or we can open up uh, the pdf file here and the pdf file will have the reports on it the statement of activities the expenses the uh, restricted items detail and the statement of financial position. That's gonna be it for now, let's get out of here.